Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Batchelor, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about governance. Um, specifically, I believe that a core component of what makes for successful governance, at least in this country, has started to fade away. Um, you know, when, when the country was founded, you know, I think the design intent of a representative government, a government in which you, know, you have individuals like us in this room, someplace else, I mean, representing us, trying to, to see to our interests, you know, the design intent of that government is that it would be a government you know, of the people. You know, that people would leave their occupation at hardship to look to the interests of, at one point in time, a fledgling and now thriving nation. And over time, you know, as, as our government has evolved, as our society has evolved, as our you know, quality of, of living has improved, um, we've found ourselves in a position in which we've moved from governance by service, governments by people that you know, were there as, um, at hardship to serve, to governance by, by occupation. There we go. So at one point in time, um, when, when the country was founded, you know, it, was, it was normal for people to have brief periods in office, you know, two, four years or so. Um, we've evolved to a point where uh, it's regular for people to spend more than a decade um, in service. When the country was founded, it was normal for half of every representative in the Congress to choose not to run again, not to be elected out of office, not to pass away in office, but to, to move back to, to their real occupation, you know, to, to forego the hardship they've been enduring and, and return to, to their, their principal way of life. Now, I myself is, have twice considered seriously a career in politics. Um, first, um, ended in a short stint at Capitol Hill working as a you know, college student, and then the second, um, actually a series of discussions that brought me here today. And, you know, as I look back on the, the decades, the centuries of our country's history, we've been beset by difficult times. I think that our current situation is, you know, a, a phantom of the challenges faced by our, our ancestors and, and will pale in comparison to the challenges that will face generations to come. And I think when you look, you know, years by, gone by and into the future, I think I can distill pretty much every voter's interest in representation down to two simple things. A wherewithal to get the job done and a willingness to embrace the risk to do so. So I have, personally, the, the great privilege to work with who I believe to be some of the greatest minds of my generation. A handful of college students in their 20s got together and, and we built the country's fastest growing privately held engineering company. And I think in, in no small part, that's due to two things. Um, one, uh, one of our core values, push the boundaries of what is possible. And another of our core values, encourage risk taking, but tolerate failure. In an environment in which civil service transcends, or I should say representative government transcends civil service and becomes occupation, we inhibit risk taking. You know, we, we incentivize our occupational representatives not to challenge the, the really difficult problems of society, because doing so, it, it's, it's really risky. I mean, these, these are some awful problems that face us today. They're not inconsequential to solve, and doing so introduces risk. You know, the, the bedfellow of risk is, is the potential for failure, and if you fail, you know, it could, it could affect your you know, electability, you know, your position, its income, its renown. I guess I'd contend that in an environment in which civil servants are engaged in governance, you may fail, but you'll take a shot at it, you know. If you fail, you'll consign yourself that you did your best and move on to, to your real occupation. You know, return to that thing, you know, that is your, your principal way of life, your, your principal driving factor. And now I think that, you know, you kind of look at the graphs and the trends, and, and for me, and I suspect for most of you guys, this has been intuitively obvious uh, for some time. Now, what's next for me is, is the really remarkable thing. 
there's um, a group called 24-7 Wall Street, and they do sort of this index ranking of, of quality of state governance. And they look at things like um, unemployment rate. Um, they look at things like um, you know, home value trends. They look at state credit stores. They look at you know, the percentage of a state populace that has health insurance. Um, they look at you know, home, um, occupied home value trends. They look at um, you know, state debt ratios. Um, and um, percentage of high school graduates in the state, violent crime rates in the state, foreclosure rates, you know, generally the things that contribute to a vibrant and healthy state economy. As I, I kind of thought about you know, governance, what makes for a quality representative government, um, you know, I, I thought about comparing different representative governance, trying to find you know, similarities that would allow for, for fair comparison. And if there's fair comparison to be made, I would contend it can be made by comparing you know, the states within our own federal system. If you're going to find across the you know, broad variety of different political and socioeconomic climates, you know, fair comparison, let's, let's look at our 50 states. The three best governed states in our country are states in which the percent of time demanded from a legislator and the requisite income from serving ensure that that person must have an alternate and primary source of income. The three worst governed states in our country are governed by legislators where the time demanded of their job precludes the opportunity to have a secondary source of income, and so it pays in commensurate fashion. They are occupational representatives. So the three best governed states in the country, one of which is the fine state I stand in right now, uh, are governed by civil servants. The three worst governed states in our country are governed by people whose, occup whose, whose occupation is, is governance itself. And I would contend that there's something there. That's kind of astonishing, really, to take all that in. So, you know, this is, this is Ted, right, guys? This is ideas worth sharing. My idea is that when the country founded, when, when the intent of governance was that people would briefly leave their lives to serve, that we had it right, that there was really something there. My supposition is, though we've evolved someplace else, that we can change, that the power to change is in this room, it's out there, it's watching this video right now. You know, this is, this is about ideas worth sharing. It's, it's about ideas so big that they become a movement unto themselves. Now, I wish I could stand up here and say, you know, I've got four steps that are going to fix this problem. I, I don't. You know, this is, this is an idea you know, that become a movement. And, you know, the rest is really up to, to all of you. Thank you.